A Pride event charges white people a reparations fee. Hunter Biden's drifty paintings, and Democrats' renewed push to kill the Senate filibuster. Then more on this week's headlines. America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. The Taking Black Pride LGBTQ event in Seattle this week has been criticized for charging white people a reparations fee to enter. Taking Black Pride's website says white allies and accomplices will be charged from $10 to $50 to keep the event free for the black and brown trans and queer community. Philip Lipson and Charlotte Lefebvre run a competing Pride event in Seattle, the Capitol Hill Pride event. They said taking Black Pride's reparations fee was reverse discrimination. And they wrote a letter asking Seattle's Human Rights Commission to investigate the event as a possible ethics and elections violation. The Seattle Human Rights Commission dismissed their complaints, shared the letter, and publicly criticized Lipson and Lefebvre. Because saying that discriminating against someone based on the color of their skin is racist, is racist. Lipson and Lefebvre apologized for their complaint after a wave of backlash. But I think the whole situation is ridiculous. Mainly because there are already organizations that white people pay reparations to every single day in this country. They're called Native American casinos. And those are generational reparations too, since countless white fathers donate their children's college savings to the blackjack tables. Police officers may not be welcome at some Pride events, but they can probably still see what's happening. Law enforcement requests for user data have more than tripled in the U.S. since 2015. What kind of user data? People's phone calls, emails, texts, photos, shopping histories, and even driving routes. In the first half of 2020, Apple, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft got more than 112,000 data requests from local, state, and federal officials. They agreed to hand over at least some data in 85% of those cases. No wonder Twitter's logo is a bird, because that snitch is singing to the cops like a canary. Law enforcement using these platforms to gather information on us is outrageous. If only there was something we could do to maintain our privacy and not let it fall into the hands of big tech. I know. I'll tweet about it. Retweet if you think the feds shouldn't be allowed to use Instagram to find out if we own any illegal pets, like my pet orangutan, Mook Mook. And send. That'll keep them out of my business. Now, I don't know art, but I know what I like. And what I like is potential money laundering schemes. Hunter Biden is launching a new career as an artist and his stuff is actually good and will be worth a lot, according to experts. Of course, the experts are saying that Hunter's paintings will be worth a lot of money, not because they're good, but because he's the president's son. Hunter Biden will be holding an art auction, where he will be selling his paintings to anonymous buyers for up to half a million dollars each. Hmm, I wonder if any of these anonymous buyers will be from China or Ukraine. Walter Schaub was the former Office of Government Ethics Director under President Obama. He went on Fox News to criticize the auction, saying, the notion of a president's son capitalizing on that relationship by selling art at obviously inflated prices and keeping the public in the dark about who's funneling money to him has a shameful and grifty feel to it. Sure, paying hundreds of thousands of dollars on a modern art scam like this to gain political influence would be shady and corrupt. But it's at least a better investment than spending millions of dollars on a modern art scam like this. This piece sold for $46.5 million. This isn't art. It looks like a rejected Swedish flag design. More after this commercial break. Welcome back. American Airlines has canceled hundreds of flights and could continue canceling hundreds more through mid-July due to staff shortages and maintenance issues. However, American Airlines says these canceled flights 
are due to unprecedented weather, which sounds like a lame excuse. But maybe they meant it's due to the political climate. Thanks to PC culture, now even flights are being canceled. The systems American Airlines had in place to ensure smooth operations are breaking down, and the people in charge are shifting the blame. I say, this airline has never sounded truly more American. And speaking of American systems breaking down, after several Fulton County, Georgia poll monitors testified last year that boxes of mail-in ballots for Joe Biden looked like they had been run through a photocopy machine, state investigators inspected hundreds of votes for fraud. But they did it in secret. Because what better way to put people's minds at rest over a suspicious secret ballot count than with a suspicious secret ballot review? This is the polling place version of when police departments say, we've investigated ourselves and found no wrongdoing. This is like if a cookie went missing from the cookie jar and the kid with crumbs on his face said he'd take the jar into the other room and look into it. While we're on the topic of authorities trying to cover up something that smells off, California utilities officials are telling Sacramento residents to add lemon to their drinking water. Why? because California water now tastes like dirt due to rivers and streams drying up. In California, when life gives you lemons, that's a good thing, because it means the drought hasn't killed off all the citrus trees yet. If you're thinking they'd have to pay you to live in California at this point, that's almost what they're doing, because Governor Gavin Newsom announced California will pay off all unpaid rent racked up during the pandemic. In response, California residents who've been paying their rent this whole time asked why Newsom didn't make this announcement 15 months ago. Why did no one tell us rent was optional? Instead of paying my landlord, I could have bought a PS5 and a home theater. If you live in California and have been diligently trying to work and pay your rent all year, that means your tax dollars will now pay other people's rent. What's that, Shelley? All the money for California's plan actually comes from the federal government? So in that case, if you live in America and have been diligently trying to work and pay your rent all year, that means your tax dollars will now pay other people's rent in California. You know what state never asks the rest of the country to pay its rent? Delaware. But landlords in California have been squeezed since Governor Newsom started the COVID lockdowns. They were unable to collect rent from a lot of tenants, but Newsom's eviction moratorium also made it illegal for them to evict those tenants. Newsom also announced he'd look into extending the eviction moratorium for another few months, which, coupled with the announcement of California paying unpaid rent, is another way of saying, no need to pay rent for another few months, California. Woo! The home theater business is a boomin'. It's nice they're doing away with all that debt and rent racked up during the pandemic. If only there were a way they could also get rid of all this weight we racked up during the pandemic. It's no wonder California citizens gained so much weight, considering how much Gavin Newsom is trying to butter them up ahead of his recall election in November. If a recall is all it takes for governors to give us what we want, then I say we should start petitions to recall every governor. That way, maybe we could also get lower state taxes, potholes in the street fixed, and legalized pet orangutans. Leave Mook Mook alone, you political hacks. More after the break. Welcome back. Rhode Island Senator Sheldon Whitehouse is defending his family's membership in the private Bailey's Beach Club amid questions about whether or not it's all white. I don't know what the questions are, though. It's a private beach club in Rhode Island and this guy's name is Sheldon Whitehouse. If that sentence were any whiter, it'd be served with mayonnaise in a pair of overalls. The only black member of a club that white would probably be Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. It's been two years since his old yearbook photo made headlines, but it does not get any easier to look at. Meanwhile, Senator Whitehouse says he's unsure if any people of color are members of the club, and he finds it unfortunate there aren't more. As far as defenses go, that wasn't the best. A better defense would be saying it's okay the club is all white because they're not paying membership fees, they're paying reparations. 
Something that we'll be paying more for soon is fast food. As U.S. fast food chains are cutting back on $5 and under value items and instead pushing $10 to $30 combination meals. These companies are hoping this strategy will restore profits lost during the pandemic. I personally think this is a terrible idea. The whole reason anyone buys fast food is because it's cheap. No one is going to spend restaurant prices for soggy chalupas they eat in their parked car outside their apartment so they can throw away the wrappers in the dumpster and not have their significant other find out they're cheating on their diet again. Um, hypothetically. Speaking of fights we've heard time and time again, this week a Senate committee hearing was held over a bill to grant statehood to Washington, D.C. As expected, it didn't go well. Republican Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin said making D.C. a state is a naked power grab by Democrats. This outcome was predictable. Democrats said, D.C. will vote for us. They should be a state. Republicans said, D.C. won't vote for us. They shouldn't be a state. And my OCD said, 50 is such a perfect number. Why would you want to ruin it? If D.C. becomes a state, that means we need to make 49 new states to get an even hundred. I say, just merge the residential areas of D.C. into Maryland. This way, everyone there gets to vote, and no one has to add an extra star to their American flags. This bill to grant statehood to Washington, D.C. is unlikely to get enough Republican support to clear a 60-vote threshold for passage. The GOP can simply block it using the filibuster like they did on Tuesday, to block the Democrats for the People Act. That was a massive election reform bill I covered a few months ago. This has caused a renewed push from Democrats to eliminate the filibuster. Amy Klobuchar said, an archaic Senate rule cannot get in the way of protecting our democracy. The filibuster is not worth it. I agree. When it comes to archaic ways of settling political disputes, forget the filibuster. I prefer the duel. It's just so much more civilized. There's precedence for this. In 2013, Democratic Senator Harry Reid and a Democratic majority did away with the filibuster for most judicial nominations. And that's why Trump was able to appoint approximately 12 million federal judges during his presidency. If you think things are crazy now, without the filibuster, Democrats could decide tomorrow to make it mandatory for every white baby's first words to be, I'm sorry for oppressing minority babies. Then when Republicans regain power in a few years, they could make it mandatory for babies to carry grenade launchers. I could go on and on with examples, but I don't want to filibuster. Even though I think it might be a good idea for it to stay. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.